Hi guys, I find it fascinating how people, but politicians in particular, can be so wrong about something that they're not embarrassed by that. That they're not ashamed in any way to have been so erroneous about something that they pretty much built their entire career on. What I'm talking about is Daniel Hanan. Back in 2015, before the Brexit referendum, he dismissed the idea out of hand that Britain would leave the single market, and in a sense suggested that it would be absurd to think that the UK would put up trade barriers with its nearest market. Now he's sitting in the House of Lords, complaining about the consequences of a Brexit he campaigned for. Here in this clip he is complaining about unelected bureaucrats making decisions for Northern Ireland. I didn't make the wise life choices that my noble friend Lord Lee of Hurley did, so I've no idea how efficacious these vehicles are, but surely that is an issue that ought to be determined through our own national democratic mechanisms and procedures rather than handed to us by people over whom we have no control. And it's <laughs> Okay, he's standing or sitting in the House of Lords, he was appointed to the House of Lords, to an unelected chamber, and is complaining about a non-democratic process. It's this point of, of trade-offs that I think is being missed. I mean, of course, we were. Uh, how could one not have been persuaded by Lord Judge's customary wry, terse brilliance in the way he phrases the problem of executive overreach? I think all of us on all sides recognise the problem, but we're, we're dealing in a world of imperfections. And the alternative is an also unconstrained and to some degree arbitrary power where decisions are made, often by middle-ranking uh, European commissioners who are not accountable to anyone. They were elected by their governments. The commissioners are elected by the, are selected, appointed in a sense by the governments, but they are, elect, they are elected governments. Inadequate as the statutory instrument is, there is some mechanism of control here, but as Lord Dodds just explained, we will have a situation where the state aid regime in Northern Ireland is being imposed by people who are completely outside the democratic process. Now, so he's complaining here that Northern Ireland, which has access to the single market, will have rules imposed upon it by people who are not represented, represented in Northern Ireland. But this is what you wanted. This is exactly what you wanted. Why are you complaining about the consequences of Brexit? A Brexit you campaigned for. You campaigned for Brexit. You, you wanted Brexit. Now, I find this extremely confusing because back in 2015, he was saying, well, we're not going to leave the single market. But now he's complaining about the consequences of being outside the single market. Now, he hasn't come out and said, I'm sorry, I was wrong about what I said back in 2015. He hasn't tried to correct the record and try to explain what he was talking about. As far as I know, he still believes he was right <laughs> because he hasn't said he was wrong. But he was wrong because he said, nobody's, nobody's talking about leaving the single market, but the, U but the UK, or Great Britain, I should say, is outside the single market. Northern Ireland has access. Now, because Northern Ireland is still part of the United Kingdom, it's not part of the EU, then it doesn't have representation in the European Parliament. But that's what you wanted with Brexit. How can he stand up there and complain about how Northern Ireland doesn't have representation in the European Parliament? It has these rules imposed upon it. When that's what he exactly wanted. I, I very much hope that this bill goes through without these amendments. I'm, a, I realize, a very lonely supporter of it in these debates. But I hope that once it has gone through, Northern Ireland can become a bridge between the United Kingdom and uh, the European Union, that it can become a forum for cooperation. But that is only going to be possible if we live up not only to the Belfast Agreement, but to the wider principles on which it rests, above all, representative government and a proper link between taxation, representation, and expenditure. Yeah. What representation? You want Northern Ireland to have representation in the European Parliament, but then Northern Ireland is not part of the EU, and you don't want it to be part of the EU. So you want Northern Ireland to have some sort of representation in Europe, but not representation in Europe, because that would mean it'd be, it would be part of the EU. It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe it makes sense to somebody else. 
they, once again, this is a guy who said, we're not leaving the single market. Great Britain has left the single market. Northern Ireland has access to the single market. And he's complaining about how Northern Ireland, no, people in Northern Ireland don't have representation. In a sense, it's uh, no taxation without representation. <laughs> but it's, uh, but this is a consequence of Brexit. Now, none of this was actually necessary. It was not necessary. And, you know, if Daniel Hannan from 2015 has got his way, uh, we wouldn't be talking about this because the United Kingdom as a whole would be still in the single market. And there would be no need for any Northern Ireland protocol or anything like that. I'd love to ask him. I would love to sit down with him and ask him to explain to me why, <laughs> why he was right or why he, uh, he hasn't corrected the record. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.